Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace uh, CV axles on a Subaru WRX. So these CV axles on my car are pretty messed up. Let me see if I can just... Nah, but you can see that boot is torn, all that grease is gone. Once this boot is open and that grease is exposed, you've pretty much got to replace them because they get contaminated and then internal failure happens. Uh, but luckily these things aren't too expensive. This is a brand new uh, CV axle I got off of Rock Auto. I think they're like $39 a piece or something, not too crazy. Um, I've read and heard online not to use remanufactured CV axles because uh, they are not good unless they're remanufactured from Subaru. Uh, they say buy new or buy ones from Subaru. This is the new axle out of the box. Uh, as you can see, it's the same as the old axle. If this was compressed where it should be. Um, I've already installed the driver's side one. Figured I'd make a video to show you guys the passenger side one. The first thing you're gonna have to do is to jack up your car. Um, once you got it in the air, you're gonna wanna do both sides. Uh, put it on some jack stands so that you're safe. Next, you're gonna wanna undo these five um, lug nuts. They're 19 millimeter. Uh, with the wheel off, I like to throw it under the front of the car just so that if this jack stand was to fail, it would fall on the wheel rather than falling on the ground. So next, you're going to need to undo this 12 millimeter bolt that holds your ABS sensor line on, and there's also going to be a 12 millimeter bolt that holds your brake line on. Uh, previous owner of these struts totally destroyed this thread in bolt hole, so I'm just, I have this zip tied. Uh, this just holds the line in place so it doesn't contact anything, so zip tie works fine there. So next you're going to need to undo these two bolts that go from the strut to the hub. Um, this top one is a camber bolt, which means it's off-center. I'll show you guys once I pull this one out. Um, but basically you want to take and make a mark with whiteout, like on the bolt head and on the strut body, like right across there, um, so that you know where that's lined up. Otherwise, because uh, that bolt controls your camber, Otherwise, you'll have to go get an alignment. I need to get an alignment anyway, so I'm not worrying about it. But make a mark there, and it'll keep all of your alignment settings the way they are before you do the job. I'll actually show you guys here. So if you just rotate this, and it comes back out. That's because this bolt is off center. It's not a round bolt. So as it goes around it, adjust your camber. Before you pull those out, you're going to need to remove this axle nut. This is the hardest part of this job, I'd have to say. Um, this nut attaches your axle to your hub. It's hard to see because this is really dirty, but this side right here, um, well, it should be dented into that little groove. It should be like notched in, like bent in with a screwdriver. So you usually have to stick a screwdriver in there and pound that out to make it round so this nut can spin. This one's apparently already been done like that. And the next step is to remove this. So this is something that y'all probably don't have. Uh, I know I had to go buy one um, a while ago. This is a one and one quarter inch uh, strong socket. <laughs> uh, this one's actually a one inch drive, which I don't have a tool for, so I have to use a pipe wrench, a monkey wrench on it, but that fits there. Uh, process is pretty simple. Just have somebody step on the brake in the car to squeeze this so that the hub doesn't rotate and then break that one free. Uh, if you don't have somebody with you, you can, I've heard you can throw a screwdriver down these veins so when it rotates it bottoms out, uh, but these things can be pretty tight so it's better if you get somebody to hold the brake for you. So with a trusty sidekick holding the brakes down this thing won't rotate so you can see I've got a pipe wrench on it and a little bit of an extension um, not be able to show you guys how I break this free because I gotta use both my hands but just assume that we do <laughs> I had to go rent a socket from O'Reilly's Auto Parts a lot of auto parts stores are renting stuff I've got it on a Craftsman breaker bar and a six-foot pole which should give us a lot of uh, leverage over this. Um, as you can see, I'm doing this alone, and I have uh, this blocked, so hopefully this doesn't just bend or shear. 
Uh, with that broken free, um, I just took this nut off, flipped it around, and screwed it back on. You can use this to hammer it through. Uh, but now you can go ahead and pull out these two bolts and pull the hub down. Um, with those bolts loose, you can just pull this hub out. And next, you're going to hammer on this. Give it a good couple of whacks. And as you can see, that pops that out of the back. I ended up just using a little bit of a pry bar. Just pry on that on all the sides until it gets loose. So you gotta do a little bit of wiggling and angling of this bit to get that to pop out of here. Um, it's hard for y'all to see. My phone's too dead to show a flash. But there's a rubber seal in there. Uh, try not to damage that when pulling this out or putting the new one in. Um, little rubber seal that goes around there. All right, this next part's kind of easy. You just gotta go under the car and pop the axle out of the transmission. To do this, again, I'm using my small pry bar and you can use a hammer, but you shouldn't really need it. All right, so just sort of wedge this in between the transmission and the axle and just pull, give it a little pop. And then uh, you can work this axle free. It should just come out. So a little bit of transmission fluid will drip out, but not too much. Um, you want to make sure that this clears, and then you should be able to just pull the whole thing out of the car from here. So this one actually came off in two pieces. The other piece is uh, still up under there, so I'm going to pull that out. Yeah, so just slide this back in, same way you pulled out the other one, and feed it into the transmission. Once you've got it in this far, uh, you have to get it past that sear clip. What I've done is just use this kitten's paw, braced against this little lip, and then just tap it in with a hammer and it, it just slides in real easy. And then once you get it in about this far, you can just slide it the rest of the way with your hand until it butts all the way up there. Next, we need to go back over to the, um, the hub side and get that sucker aligned with the hub splines. Process is the same on this side. Just take this, wiggle it back and forth until the splines line up, and then um, tap it in with this ring until these line up. Once these line up, you should be able to spin the hub and it should turn the axles. Um, and then you're gonna put the nut on the other side and that'll suck it through. Uh, with that axle seated all the way into the hub, um, you can suck down this nut and get it decently tight. Tighten it down snug, then a little bit more, but you don't really want to crank down on it because uh, you'll crush your wheel bearings. Um, so you want to just get that pretty snug, pretty tight, use proper torque specs, and put back in these two nuts and bolts. Don't forget to put your washer on the camber bolt. It goes on this side. So you want to rotate your camber bolt back to where your mark lines up, the, uh, the mark that you put on, and then hold that with a wrench, tighten down that side, just tighten up that side, bolt this down, re-zip tie that, or re-bolt it back in. Um, and this is, this nut was not like this. Uh, it should have been when I pulled it off, but I just took a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and just hammered that in. This is meant to be crushed into this spot. That's so if anything happens, this nut can't spin loose. Uh, so the first step y'all are gonna have to do is probably to beat that back out so you can spin that nut. Um, other than that, just tighten everything up. Uh, double check everything um, and then go for a drive with the windows down listen for any strange noises make sure nothing's out of the ordinary and you should be good to go uh, so this has been how to replace your front CV axles on a 2005 Subaru Impreza WRX uh, hopefully this helped you guys um, it's really not that difficult of a project to attempt yourself uh, I'd say it's probably a good three or four out of ten on the difficulty scale. I'd say I could do both sides in about an hour. If you want to see more of my WRX build you can follow me on Instagram. The tag is WRX Warrior. Thanks for watching.